Okay, the purpose of today's video is to introduce you to the concept of standard Brownian motion. Okay, so let's start with the basic properties of standard Brownian motion. Standard Brownian motion here denoted as W, indexed with time. So W at time zero equals zero. What this means is that our Brownian motion at time equals zero takes the value of zero and this is best explained looking at the graph here. I've got here a realization of my Brownian motion path. The Brownian motion decided to take this path and this is just one realization of, of Brownian motion. Okay, But one thing that all realizations of Brownian motion will have is that and they will take a value of zero at time equal zero. So let's denote the W at time zero equals zero. Okay, So here on this axis we've got time, on the x-axis we've got time, and on the y-axis we've got W, which is the values of our Brownian motion. Now clearly this property was pretty much self-explanatory. Let's have a look at the other properties. Property number two, Brownian motion is normally distributed with mean zero and variance t and Brownian motion increment w small t minus w small s is also normally distributed with uh, mean zero and variance t minus s. Okay, so what does it mean that the Brownian motion is normally distributed with mean zero and variance t? So say I'm standing here at time equals zero and I want to know what my Brownian motion is or will be at time say time equals t equals 2. Okay so I see here that this single realization of Brownian motion happened to take a value of 0 0.4 okay but this is just one real realization on the other realization Brownian motion can end up here, here, there, there, there it can pretty much end up all over the shop, i.e. It, it can take a range of values. The good news, however, is that I will know what the expected value, okay, so this is the distribution of Brownian motion at time equal to, okay, but the good news, I will know what the center of the distribution is, i.e. What, what the expected value of this distribution is, um, and this will be expected value of W at time 2 equals zero, okay? It will always be zero. Whether I look at the Brownian motion here, here, or, or here, the expectation of Brownian motion at all these points is zero. So not only the mean or our expe expected value, that the value of the Brownian motion at any time will be zero, but also we are told that it will be normally distributed. That's why here, I graphed like a normal distribution, okay? The peak of this distribution is centered at zero, meaning that my Brownian motion will be distributed as a normal variable with expected value zero and variance t, okay? Now, crucially, it says t here. What does it mean? Well, if I look at the distribution of my Brownian motion, say at this point here, then I will see that this distribution is also centered at zero, but the variance of this distribution, say at time equals t equals one, is one, okay? Now the variance of this distribution, Brownian motion at this point, will be two, okay? So my variance will basically, so if I have here, just draw another graph, my, my variance will increase proportionally to time. So this is variance, I will denote here sigma squared, is proportional, is of order t. Okay, I think I already spent too much time on this to illustrate such a simple concept. I only spoke about wt, but the, there is a related concept, i.e. the Brownian motion increment, which is the difference between uh, two Brownian motions, okay? At, uh, so one at time t, the other one uh, at time s. And it turns out that the difference between the two Brownian motion is also normally distributed. And the variance of the Brownian motion increments, i.e. the difference between two Brownian motion, is just t minus s. T stands for time and S stands for time. It's just the difference in time between the two Brown between the measurements of our Brownian motions. Okay, so what this means if if I look at my Brownian motion somewhere at this point here and somewhere at this point here, so the expected increment 
so this is time t, this is time s. The expectation of the difference of these two Brownian motion, vt minus vs, equals 0. And the variance of this difference equals t minus s. Yet again, it's proportional variance, proportional to time. Yeah? We'll show these properties more formally later on, um, one by one. But let's, uh, let's continue. Let's uh, discuss other properties of Brownian motion. Uh, the process Wt has st stationary and independent increment. Okay, so what does it mean that the Brownian motion has stationary increments? Well, if I look at my Brownian motion at time 0 and say my Brownian motion at time 1, and then I looked at my displaced Brownian motion, I moved the Brownian motion uh, increment further in time by a constant a, okay? So this is going to be to w0 plus a and w1 plus a. And what this means is that the distribution of this increment here, okay, will be exactly the same as the distribution of this increment here, i.e. they will both be normal with expected value of 0 and variance of t1 minus t0. So it doesn't matter where you look at the Brownian motion, it will always have the same properties, okay? It's an expectation, so um, we're talking here about the increments. The, in the incremental expectation will be always 0 and the variance will be just the, the difference, difference in time. So to sum up, independently where you look at the Brownian motion, whether you look at Brownian motion here in this time interval or here, it will always have the same property in pr probabilistic sense. Okay, it will always have an expectation of uh, zero, and variance will be proportional to time. Another property is that increments, say if w1 less w0 and w1 plus a less w0 plus a. What independence says is that whatever, however I moved in this time interval will have absolutely no bearing on how I'm going to move in this time interval. Okay, I'm going to clear this graph. Let's see some other properties of Brownian motion. We'll briefly enumerate them without actually proving them at, the, at this stage. Covariance of uh, two Brownian motion paths is the minimum of time s or t. So say, I, looked, I look at my Brownian motion at time s and I look at my Brownian motion at time t and if I try to find covariance of these two terms, I will find that the covariance will be the minimum of s and t. When he, here it's clear that s is before t, therefore the covariance of these two terms will be s. Property number five says Brownian motion is the Markov process. Okay, so what does it mean Markov process? All it means is that past is irrelevant for where I'm going to be in the future. I.e. say we are here, uh, so I'm here at this point. It's irrelevant what I've done in the past. It's ir irrelevant how I moved in the past for where I'm going to be in the future. So past has absolutely no bearing on my future evolution. Next property, Brian motion is a martingale, okay, so this says expected value of the Brownian motion which moved by time s so I'm at time t and it moved by time s. Um, conditional or all the information, conditional filtr filtration, i.e. all the information I have available at time t is just where I am at the moment. So yet again, this martingale property can be used, illustrated. Imagine that I'm standing here at time w t. I ask myself a question: Where I'm going to be at the time w t plus s? Well, according to the martingale property of Brownian motion, my expectation of where I'm going to be at time d t plus s, conditional on all the information I have, how I moved in the past. Okay, here I move up, down, up and down several times. Conditional on, the, on this, all the information I have, what I've done in the past, which is denoted by f capital T, is nothing else but w t. Okay, so what this means is that I don't expect to have moved at all. I expect to stay at the same level, i.e., somewhere here. So uh, negative. Okay, I expect to be at the same point at time t plus s as when I was at time w t. 
Finally, Brownian motion is continuous everywhere. This is property, num property number seven and differentiable nowhere. What this means is that you can probably see it here. It's continuous everywhere because there are no jumps. There are no discrete continuities in this Brownian motion. And you cannot differentiate it anywhere. Okay, so let me erase one more time the chart. Hold on, you may ask. Well, surely this, for instance, let's have a look at this bit here. Surely you can find a derivative of this. Well, my depiction of Brownian motion is a bit inaccurate here because if you actually zoomed into this, you would see that it does like this all the time, yeah? So my Brownian motion goes up and down, up and down, up and down, but actually I can't really find a derivative at any point simply because it's just too rough, okay? It's got spikes everywhere. So for instance, if I if I t tell you to find a derivative the derivative at this point, you you won't be able to find it because it can be you know is it this is it this uh, it's just it's just impossible to find derivative and in fact if you zoom if you were to zoom on this Brownian motion path you would see that it just it's const constantly moving it's impossible to find a derivative at any point we'll prove this more formally uh, later on and that's what um, property number Eight is saying Brownian motion is fractal, i.e., too uh, irregular and rough in, in structure. In the next videos, we'll be showing all these properties in more detail, actually proving them one by one.